Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and this is the Cells as the Basis of Life module. Video number 10 is going to focus on active transport. Now in this particular video we're going to be looking at some of the ways in which material can move in and out of cells just as we did for diffusion and osmosis. But this time we're going to start looking at active transport. You may recall that the processes of osmosis and diffusion were both passive processes. Well, we can't always rely on passive processes to move materials into and out of in around the cells. So when that uh, is not available to us, we need another mechanism. And that's why we want to look today at active transport. So as I mentioned, the problem with diffusion and osmosis is they're passive processes. They take advantage of a concentration gradient. We know that with concentration gradients, we have an area where a substance is in high concentration and another area where the same substance is in a lower concentration. And we have a passive movement of particles from an area of high to an area of low concentration. They take advantage of that concentration gradient. But unfortunately, some materials need to be moved against the concentration gradient, and this requires energy. And the most important thing that we need to be aware of when we're looking at energy requirements is that the energy um, to do work in cells comes from this very important ATP molecule. Now, the ATP molecule is one that we're going to look at. It's associated, you may already be aware of the fact that it's associated with the process of respiration and where that energy in uh, carbohydrates, in glucose in particular, is being released into the cell. But that ATP is critically important for active transport mechanisms. So where we have, for example, um, an area where we have high sodium concentration, low sodium concentration, um, in comparison to the um, extracellular, intracellular regions um, of, that are bound by that uh, phospholipid membrane, you can see that the passive mechanism would go from high to low. But if we wanted to try and push um, sodium out of the cell against that concentration gradient, then we're going to have to have the addition of energy. And there's a couple of ways in which that might happen. We've looked at the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane, this phospholipid bilayer, which actually contains within it different proteins, some of which are uh, integral to the the structure and the integrity of the membrane, but others which are actually helping to facilitate the movement of particles into and out of the cell uh, through these protein channels. And some of that is um, still through passive transport, but in other occasions there are particular carrier proteins that will bind to certain particles and uh, assist their passage through the cell, either from the inside to the outside or outside to the inside. So as I mentioned, the main thing that we need to be worried about is the fact that if there's an energy process, usually the energy currency that's going to be required is ATP. And often there's a chemical relationship where the ATP bonds to, a, say, a specific protein uh, and or the material that's being transported. Um, sometimes it's a kind of a uh, complex that's formed between the ATP, the protein, and the particle. Um, and a lot of this is quite complex biochemistry, and at this point in time, we don't want to get too caught up with the biochemistry associated with some of these processes. We'll kind of dip in and dip out from time to time and look at a little bit more detail in class. But the important thing is that in a lot of, uh, a lot of these reactions, uh, ATP becomes hydrolyzed and it releases ADP in a phosphate group. In a, in a simple, uh, probably an oversimplified form, you can look at um, the D, of course, meaning diphosphate, and you often see the phosphate uh, with the I uh, subscript, and the I just indicates that it's an inorganic. There's no carbon compounds linked to that phosphate group. It's just an isolated phosphate group that's been broken away from that triphosphate, those three phosphates in a row. And we'll look at that in a future video. Um, so this is the, the energy currency that's used to transport particles across the membrane. And of course, in order to rebuild this process again, we need that um, uh, energy from glucose, from respiration, in order to rebuild uh, our ATP molecules so they can be uh, used for similar sorts of processes. 
So one example of these very important processes are the ion pumps. And um, I kind of alluded to that in the first one when we were looking at what happens with something like sodium, when sodium, the sodium concentration is highest in the place you actually want to move the sodium to. So that means you're kind of trying to move it against the concentration gradient. And this is obviously one of the important things here. The sodium potassium pump is really important. Um, there's a couple of places where this occurs. Probably the most important place where this occurs is in our nervous system, in our neurons. And that um, they are an electrical system and that electrical system is based on the movement of charge. And sodium and potassium ions play a critical role in that um, movement of signals along neurons. In order for this particular process to occur, we need specific proteins to facilitate the exchange of the sodium ions for potassium ions across the um, cell membrane. So we are actually doing an exchange here um, of sodium ions for potassium ions, and that may not necessarily occur as a passive process, which means, of course, we need um, energy to uh, facilitate that process. Of course, once we've set up um, a, an ion exchange like this, what we may do is create an artificial um, uh, concentration gradient for other substances. And, and so therefore, the pump itself will actually allow other substances, which could include things like glucose and other important uh, organic compounds, to be moved into the cell, which is obviously a very important compound for cells. So this is just one quick overview of uh, an application of active transport where we might specifically want to be moving our particles against the concentration gradient. And in order to do that, we need uh, a supply of energy. We will look at the processes of exocytosis and endocytosis in a little more detail too, because I think they fit nicely into this section, but we'll leave that for another video. Thanks for watching.